Okay, and this is wholeness. This is all there is. There is absolutely nothing to get or to gain or to realize or to lose even, because that's what it means. It's whole and complete. It's everything. Uh, there isn't anything that's too much and there isn't anything missing. It's just perfect. What happens is perfectly itself. Um, but of course, it's a blind wholeness or it's a blind perfection. This means that it's inexperienced. There is no separate experience of perfection or there is no separate knower of perfection. It's a blind perfection. So it doesn't even have a clue what it would mean, perfect, imperfect. That's what it means when I say it's a blind perfection. So as there is no one separate, as there is nothing else than what apparently happens, there's nothing else than perfection. So naturally there can't be a path towards that. Naturally there can't be a teaching or suggestions or all those things, because as I said, there's no one separate. That's the dream, that there is someone separate, that there is a separate person, a separate something, that has an autonomous existence, that is consciously living, so to speak. I am, I exist, and I have to consciously do my life. And part of my life is the idea to find my way back to wholeness. All of this would be part of this one dream. And this one dream is, I am, I exist, there is something. No, there isn't, there isn't anyone. There isn't something there which you are, which we are. There's just this. There's just what apparently happens for no one. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whoever wants to comment on that, you are welcome to do so or have a question. Hello. Hi. Um, Andreas, I, I just want to ask you a, about a, a quote from your book, um, The End of All Lockdowns. And it is, leave yourself alone and everything will take care of itself. Yes. And I just wanted to ask you about the leave yourself alone bit, because it almost sounds like a verb, you know? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I'm a, really like a doing in a way. Yeah, no, it's impossible. It's a story. It's it's yeah. it's a bit romantic. I'm, I'm <laughs> I deeply, deeply apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. There is no one who can do that. There's just absolutely no movement, no step, not even to leave oneself alone. It's I'm I'm sorry for that. Probably it's That's okay. <laughs> Probably it comes out of this Master Eckhart book or something. Right, right. Yes, yes yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's Thanks a dream much. that, yes, yeah, it's a dream that there is someone who can do or needs to do anything at all. Right, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> Oh, start sweating. <laughs> Leave yourself alone. God. All right, there's a, a question in the chat. It's a bit longer, I read it up. Could we say the me is just a reporter? It just reports what apparently happened. Sense, perceptions, thoughts, feelings. No one knows what a thought is. No one really knows the content of a thought. We are just an apparent automatic functioning, completely empty, meaningless, without direction, without someone who sees that. 
Uh, yes, yeah, one could say so. Absolutely. Well, well, report. Or, the thing is, in order for there to be a report, a real report or a real comment on what happens, there needs to be a perceiver already. So in that sense, the reporting or the commenting would only be a symptom of separation. But uh, yes, kind of. It's an experience. Huh? Yeah. It's always, the person is always only experiencing. It never is what happens. And that's what makes it a bit, a, a little bit dull. It only watches, so to speak. It never is what happens. The person never is sitting on the couch reading a book. The person only has an experience of sitting on the couch reading a book. And that's what just seems to create this, this distance from what happens. And it's exactly this which seems to take away something of totality. Of course, only in the person's experience, but uh, that's just what it feels. The person never is sad. It has only an experience to be sad, of how it is to be sad. It never really is it. Not that it could be that, but that would be a way of, of describing it. It only has an experience of almost how it would be to feel sad <laughs> or to walk around or to have breakfast or whatever. It never is having the breakfast. And part of this experiencing, part of this, uh, part of this separation is reporting, commenting, inventing stories about what happens, telling oneself that story again and again. But in that sense, this would be just a, a symptom of this experience, of this illusion of experience. No, Hello. Um, you are saying that words are just coming out of your mouth, right? Um, yes. Yes, so I know there are many people where, who are, can you really talk? you just talking without noticing this, what is called unawareness. It's also just... <laughs> Just coming out of their mouth. Well, in the end, it applies to everyone. Yes. No, no one is really aware of what they are saying. Or what maybe. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, yes, I know. I thought, oh, <laughs> it was my own mouse. <laughs> I thought someone raised their hand. And uh, a comment in the chat, nothing is happening for no one. Y yes, exactly. So sitting or lying in front of a screen is nothing real happening for no one. Yes, that's all. There's no, no realization in this or no one separate from this, no one arriving in this. It's just the timeless and spaceless natural reality, so to speak. Yeah, it's this. I just thought that's what other people meditate for their whole life. Okay, uh, Dario, sorry. <clears throat> Are you mocking my meditation practice? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose. But <laughs> um, no, I, I was uh, uh, thinking when, when you said um, the uh, something to be it, like to not to know it, but to be it. Uh, but but like it cannot be known or it cannot be experienced what that is like the, it could yeah yes exactly of course it was a bit one sided when I say to mm -hmm. be it um, there, there is no pure being or there is no there's I mean usually what the person would regard as being it would be an experience of it for the person being something would always mean to have an experience of it. And of course, that's exactly how it was not meant. Yes. But that's, that's the unknowable thing. How is it sitting in front of a screen without having an experience of it? How is having, I don't know, a cake, eating a cake without there being someone experiencing it? Of course, that's the natural reality. This sitting in front of a screen or 40 people sitting in front of 42 screens without something being it consciously or observing it or knowing it or feeling it or perceiving it yeah exactly unknown impossible yes <laughs> uh, okay <clears throat> And all that's been known apparently is having an experience of it. The person really, really believes to know how it is to eat a cake. It doesn't know. It has no clue at all. All it knows is its own experience of, but it has no clue what's going on. It never knows what this actually is. And no one knows, of course. I mean, when, the, when this illusion drops, it's not that it's known then. It just turns out that it was never needed to be known what happens. How can anything be described then? Oh, and nothing can be described. <laughs> the description is also apparent. Nothing is being known and nothing can be really described. And to describe but, something, and to describe something is not an approach to the truth. It's just what apparently happens, but it's not a, 
it's not coming close to how it is, never. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Johan. Oh, I can't hear you, but your microphone, it should actually work, but. Uh, This sounds good. Um, okay. Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, how are you? Yeah, good, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, I was, um, I was thinking about what you said in the uh, in the introduction, and um, you use often that word like blind. You know, it's blindly. I can't remember exactly what you said, like uh, blindly. Whole or blindly perfect or something. Something like that. Yeah. But um, and it's funny because it reminded me of um, actually I really like I really like that uh, that word or that description in a way. But like it reminded me of. Um, some while ago, I was, uh, I heard like, I think it was a neuroscientist slash philosopher, you know, like some sort of like, some guy that was really, really deeply into like studying consciousness, basically, you know. Yeah, and that's, they all become philosophers. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't get a neuroscientist anymore. They, they, they are both now. Yeah, exactly. And anyway, he, um, he was saying, you know, like the big, for him, like the big mystery of consciousness was like it could be it could very well be like um the human body could work with like a blind awareness a blind consciousness you know but you know for him there was like you know disappearance so like it, it was kind of the mystery and the miracle or something in a way that uh the world appeared at all you know it could just be like a blind box functioning and it's it's funny because like what you're saying seems to be like almost the opposite of that that it's already blind yeah that's the thing that. yeah i think actually i wouldn't i would almost say the first part doesn't sound too far away that he's saying that there did he say there could be something like a blind awareness or something yeah he said i mean he said that it could probably like the the human body could work like that but it seems to be for no reason there's uh it's not it's not blind that's what he was saying it's not blind because there's a world appearing so like uh, no all right. so uh, like uh, so the spot yeah. yeah 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 so the so, spot yeah. that's not blind this would be self awareness and for this illusion of self awareness of course there seems to be a world appearing of course and yeah because I, I feel like there's uh like in this in this idea like the you know the um, neuroscientist idea of blind there would be like blind would be sort of like a darkness and then as opposed to sound and color and sensations and all that you know yes um, yeah so it's, it's not what you're saying i guess yeah no no not at all so but that's what i mean so for him blind awareness which I could sometimes say that there is, I sometimes say that there apparently there's awareness of the body, but no one has it. No one is aware of there being an aware body, so to speak. Maybe one could call this blind awareness. The thing just is that for him, it's just conceptual. It's yeah. just something that he can imagine to be possible. And of course, what he imagines this to be has nothing to do with how it actually is. Because yeah. then, as you say, he thinks of something like, oh, then it must be black, or then, then there wouldn't be this, or whatever, which is not the case. But yeah. Okay. So so when you're talking about when you're talking about awareness, you mean like like uh, I don't know what 
what allows the body to i don't know open a door for example and not you know or just like not bump into walls or something like that i mean in the end there is no real answer to that yeah because it's just what apparently happens including that there is an apparently aware body so in that sense, the awareness that the body has, has is just like a tool. It's like eyes or an arm or yeah, okay, yeah. feet. It's just what it has apparently and what it apparently can do. But it's mm. not really experience. That's the thing. The yeah. only experience of there being something aware or of having an aware body, that's an illusion. So yeah. self-awareness would be dreamt. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness self is the dream. Yes, exactly. Self-awareness is dreamt. And the thing is, without self-awareness, without, well, it doesn't really exist, but without self-awareness, the statement that there is an aware body doesn't really make sense anymore. Mm. This would it mean when it says there is no appearance of the world. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks. That's why scientists also can more or less, they know now at least a little bit about the function of consciousness, but they still have no clue what the I should be or self-awareness. They have no clue about that, as far as I know. And they don't find any hint that something like that exists. But of course, they have always trouble to... For, for many of them, the function of consciousness and self-awareness is somehow connected, of course. So they invent concepts and stories and in the end become philosophers. <laughs> That's when they go on guessing them. But, but you're speaking like, like that. That's actually originally how, uh, what scientific people were. They were philosophers, not like... Uh... Galileo and uh, all these people, they were kind of scientists and philosophers. And then now in our day and age, kind of split apart and they're scientists and philosophers. And maybe now it comes back to being both in the same person. Where it comes back. So I think, I think those scientists who really want to discover the truth and not just invent a better coffee machine, uh, I think they were always quite, clo quite close to spirituality or or um, philosophy or something because they were all dealing with those ideas like Einstein uh, for example they were all, all dealing with those ideas what is matter why why is there matter at all what is eternity what is time and stuff so they are kind of much closer to those questions than as I say some scientists who it wants to invent a new machine or whatever. That's just my impression. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, um, Uta. Yeah, but um, humans seem to have in this me, this, this have invented this constant reflection of, of yeah, so it's it seems to be an evolutionary thing that, and some people say, spiritual people say that it was a mistake by like, like uh, watching animals like dogs, they're just dogging, they're yeah. just happy and then uh, angry and then happy again and then uh, hungry and then satisfied. So uh, yeah, never reflecting on their problems and it seems <laughs> a human thing to constantly reflect but well i think saying this is a you know the human is wrong it, it, it's but it's also just being human in a way oh yeah it's what seems it's what seems to be happening that uh, that humans seem to have this illusion of self-consciousness at least sometimes I mean, the thing is, it's 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 not really there. It's never really the, really there because, I mean, exactly how you describe the dog, actually, most humans are too. So they get up and then they eat and then they do something and then they 
fall asleep and then they eat again and then uh, they make babies and all of that. So it's actually not so far from animals. But yes, apparently there seems to be this dream in between again and again, very unstable actually, that, that, there, that I am someone and suddenly I have to find an answer to life or... Yeah, the humans are talking to each other and trying to clear up their relationships, etc. So the dog is just doing this uh, howling. Yeah. But oh. now, I mean, this isn't, isn't, isn't for me, not just, it's like a humaning. Like, it's just what I, I cannot stop it. It is what humans do. I mean, there are no you know, humans. You can well, say. at least it is. Well, at least it is what seems to be happening. Yes, oh, of course, that, that that most people assume themselves to be someone. Uh, totally, absolutely. That's how it is. And that's what seems to be happening. So even there, there's no mistake in it, in a way that, you know. Oh, not at all. Oh, there yeah. is no mistake in feeling separate and seeking for wholeness and because it's not really happening and i and i mean it like that there is no mistake in that but there is no mistake in that still it is exactly what it is yes because often in these talks it seems as if one wants to go beyond or like you know and it's yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The seeker doesn't like to be an illusion, and it doesn't like to be doomed <laughs> to seeking and desperation and separation. That's true. The seeker would love to go beyond, yes, <laughs> which will never happen, of course. That's part of its dream, <laughs> and of course, the seeker hopes deeply that this message is a tool to go beyond which it isn't. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, there, there, there is no, yeah, there is no way to be without it. So. Well, apparently in the story it can collapse, but the collapse wouldn't be a going beyond it. But of course the person will turn it into, ah, so the collapse of the me would be a possibility to go beyond it which it just isn't. But of course, the person has the impression here in those talks that we talk for a reason. And this reason must be to, to somehow make this bloody illusion go away that makes me suffer. But it's not the case. And of course, in spirituality, and I mean, that's the thing. Well, of course, in spirituality, is it is like that all the time that they have. I mean, because it's the person's experience that there is a real problem that needs to be fixed. And of course, in, in spirituality, then it becomes the I. Oh, of course. But they say it quite, of course. They, they can tell you what's the problem the thoughts, uh, the I, your bad feelings, your unhealed childhood, um, that you are so undisciplined, that uh, your desires, whatever. They, they know in uh, the person in general, but uh, and also in spirituality, they know quite, uh, quite certainly what, what, what the problem is, of course. But well, what's pointed out here, actually, is there is no problem. There's no problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the person would say, oh, but, but, but there is a problem. Oh, yes, that's no problem. That you feel that there is a problem isn't a problem. That's mm -hmm. fine. It's, <laughs> no one cares.
<clears throat> but uh, of course, seen, seen from, from the sense of the person, when I say there is no problem, the person wants to experience it. So the person would say, this means I should experience being happy or I should enjoy not having problems or stuff. But uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be another problem then because there is no experience of, there is no experience of wholeness, goodness, being without problem and stuff. So all the seeking, separation just isn't real, but it's not replaced with, uh, with something that has gone beyond or with something that's, that's better off than before. Yes. The person also thinks that it, it had the experience a little bit, he just wants to have it more. So Absolutely. This is, uh, only thinking, oh, I can never get it. It's not also, no, the person thinks that there was a little bit experience already there. And this should be then always the case or. Exactly. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, uh, for the, that's the proof to go on seeking. Well, I, I was really happy at times. Well, five days ago when I came out of this, whatever, seminar, movie, whatever, I felt really gorgeous, so it, it is possible. Or maybe I was even happy for no reason. Yeah, of course. So the person then again says, oh, well, it does exist. I'm just not there yet completely. But... No, I have really understood you, Andreas. <laughs> yes, good luck with this understanding. <laughs> <clears throat> Andreas, yes, you've you've mentioned that for you there was a, a sort of slow fading out towards the end. Yes, and I'm wondering when when you said that that seeking came back and that was sort of what interrupted really the the, the fading out was was simply the, the the desire to continue seeking did that sort of manifest as a, as a kind of the fe feeling of a need to be vigilant and sort of you know stay in the now and all the kind of the conditioning of of, of seeking in that sense I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know the word vigilant, so just the last sentence again. The, I suppose disciplined, you know, trying to, to remain disciplined in the sense of being present and staying in being. And... Wachsam. Well, ah, okay. Um, well, I th <clears throat> well uh, yes and no, because of course that's what the seeker always wants. To, to, to stay there, to be present, for the person to remain on track is to be present and to just to be there. Um, what I had in my story, I mean, it's a story, this fading out, this just happened less and less, that's it. But I wasn't aware of that, of course. But of course, still until the end in my story, the experience of presence was regarded as something good. So, of course, out of the person's intention, there is the, the need or the wish to be there and to experience life. And in the end, no matter how the concepts are, the concept saying, well, I don't want to be here, the ego doesn't want to be, I don't, shouldn't be here. But in the instant moment, the person is always attracted to being present because that it has its value. And of course, until the end, I thought I'm someone who is on a path and I need to be there and know where I'm at in this path and well, what's it about. And yeah, basically where I'm at, where am I standing? Am I happy yet or not yet? And of course this goes on. As long as there's a person, this goes, this goes on because this is the person. 
and and in my story apparently just unnoticeably there was less and less energy in that dynamic but i didn't i wasn't even really aware of that so to speak as a story this was not the story that i'm living in all right i forgot your name jp Hi, Andreas. Hello. Um, hi. I just wanted to um, um, talk about um, blindness and unknowing because the two seem very, um, so to speak, connected, if not the same. And, and um, it seems, you know, it, it seems that over here that in the blindness, somehow, um, apparently, uh, everything seems clearer um, somehow and not to someone or to mean something or to actually even know what everything being clearer is, but it just appears to be that way. Does that make any sense? Um, yes. <laughs> kind okay. Of. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Right. I just, I just, I just. I just, as long as you, you know, you're not telling me I'm on mushrooms or something, that's fine. <laughs> and actually, I, I, that's not really what I wanted to talk about because, you know, you, you were saying earlier on about how for the person, they're never not, they're just never quite here. They're never quite having breakfast. They're never quite here in the now, so to speak. You know, they're always missing. There's always like, that. they're always late to the party, you know. And, um, you know, it just, I mean, would it be right to say it's, it's also because the person's always fixated on a thing and it's, it's always trying to grasp something. Um, is, is that, is that, could you speak to that? Yeah, Why, but, but I would say yeah. that's already only a symptom, the grasping. And I wouldn't say that the person is late to the party, but it's just as if it's standing outside and only watching the party through the window. Right. And the grasping would be like uh, the attempt to open the window to at least be a little bit part of it, <laughs> so to speak. That's, that's the seeking and the grasping, which would just come out of this separation. And it's just impossible for the person to, to actually be there. Exactly. That, that's, that's where we have to take care because there are a lot of spiritual teachings suggesting that you should totally become what happens or totally, and this doesn't work. To totally become what happens would mean death for the person. And then there mm. is no one who is at the party. Then there's just pure party. <laughs> <laughs> but, but without anyone that's the thing there is no one no one able to arrive at the party yeah so but, it's like being vigilant being vigilant or being here now or all these spiritual practice those are all just attempts to to be at the party exactly yes yeah. yes and they 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 come out of an, an observation which is personal already namely Ooh, I'm separate. I mean, the person can conceptually understand that. Also, what I'm sharing with just the party and just watching the party. It's the person can understand that picture, but all it can all it can conclude from that is how can I be at the party? And that's when that's when when the teaching starts. The grasping starts. The teaching starts. How can I come closer to the party, and how can I even be at the party, and stay at the party, or stay longer at the party, exactly. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. But the illusion starts with that there already is someone outside of it. That's and believing in that. Exactly. That's could you could you could you talk about belief? Is belief is belief that that is belief something that belongs to the person? Oh yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. 
I mean, the, the person believes and turns it into a truth. It's the person can't really understand that it's just a belief or yeah. it can understand the concept of, oh, this is just a belief, but it would just believe something. My impression is the person needs some story and regards it as the truth, whatever it is. Even if it's not believing in the person? In the story of a person. I mean, the person is the experience yeah. of a person, but conceptually yeah. it can believe in the idea that there is no such thing as a person, <laughs> mm -hmm. which, which will never be its experience, but it can go on believing this idea and telling it everyone at the party <laughs> while the others get drunk happily. <laughs> the person shouts through the window, I know there is no, or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I won't invite you to the party then. <laughs> but again, you would or you wouldn't? Uh, let me think about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. No one knows really what's better, you know, can go either way. <laughs> might have a, you might have a burnt down house. <laughs> That's when the party has been transcended even. <laughs> I mean, one could also say to stay in the picture, I'm sorry, we can also skip that picture soon. But of course, to stay in the picture, it's only the person creating this idea of there being a wonderful party. So it stands outside and sees all these happy people and hears the music and says, it must be gorgeous to be there. But the moment it arrives, nothing is happening. <laughs> but it's still gorgeous. I think I, uh, now I really have uh, lust for a party. <laughs> Maybe there is some tonight, somewhere. <laughs> Andreas. So um, I, like the person, I, I will never be invited to a party, right? <laughs> In a way. Well, one could say you are constantly invited, but you would need to die to enter it. <laughs> That's a <steep> price. <laughs> it's a high price, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sure. <laughs> exactly i would give a lot i would do a lot to come to the party meditate and eat vegan yeah. and be present and stuff but die that's a lot <laughs> asked for yeah. but in a way it can relate you know to this you know this fear of missing out you know it doesn't have to be like this grand 
cosmic party, but just like even um, I just realized these days that sometimes I, I like have this fear of like not seizing the day, you know, like when I have like a, a day off or something, I just kind of want to make the most out of it. <laughs> yes. and, uh, there's this like, it is, it's not like a neurotic, it's not like, doesn't drive me crazy, but I noticed yeah. that, it's, uh, you know, like, this little urge to um yeah to use time basically or to just i don't know like make the most out of yeah life. yeah exactly to make the most out of, out of life yeah to use it and of course and in the end uh, death uh, the idea of death is uh, can pro it's kind of the biggest fear of uh, missing out yeah oh of course because what yeah, happens when I'm not there anymore? So I might miss out a lot of things which might give me something actually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I actually I really dislike this uh sort of urge <laughs> of like I don't know, it's uh it happens automatically, but it's just really yeah, yes. really, I don't know, it's always it's always like uh, this feeling of as if you have to use life for you to, you know, to just um, as if like you a, if, if you can. There's also yes, there there can also be joy with that. Absolutely, adventure, joy. Yeah. No, but what I mean is like a, a, I feel like this is a I don't know how to yeah like a utilitarian kind of approach. You know, like life is some sort of um, some sort of raw matter that you have to to just uh shape you know or but it's like i i i really don't like that image in a way you know what i mean it's like um yeah because it's, it's not like that i mean there's always i mean life can't be used it's just what yeah, exactly happens. yeah like i feel like yeah like deep down i feel it's this way but somehow like the the person just always wants to use it you know and yeah it's always um a little bit annoying yeah well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's all it can do. Mm -hmm. Try to use its existence and try, yeah, make the, make the best out of it. Of course. Yeah. It's yeah. a dream, but this, this life is a dream, so to speak. I am, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, JP. Okay. Uh, would it would it be true to say also that um, the person wants to die? but at the same time wants to survive its own death as as someone who's joined the party uh, yes isn't it exactly. yeah one it's, it's a little bit like uh, okay okay and and um and then also this thing about glimpses you know because glimpses just happen right they happen glimpses happen and the person thinks it happened to them because they did something special and now they have to do something special or repeat what they think they did special to get another glimpse and so on. Is that, that's kind of what's happening, right? When the glimpse happens. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, one could say so exactly. Afterwards, it becomes part of my story. Something that I had a glimpse. Yeah. Yeah. And for the person who thinks, oh, now I'm further on my path, or this gave me something. Or... Yeah. So there's a claiming, there's a claiming that happens. And, um, and then, and then the, the, the person claims that for themselves. And uh, yeah, and can, can, so to speak, be misdirected, rather than just see that that's just what hap is, is happening. And that's it. And there's no meaning. And there's nothing, nothing more to to reproduce or re-achieve. Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, but the, the person, I mean, the, the person will somehow turn it into a story, or uh, will somehow turn it into an event that, in a, an event that has happened to it. So it's inevitable, actually. Right. 
that the person does with it what it does. Right. And it's not really misguided afterwards. It just goes on being me, believing something, telling itself a story and believing something. So the me, apparently, the me afterwards does the same things than it did before. It's just being me. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, apparently, out of a glimpse, uh, well, out of a glimpse, you know, apparently out of a glimpse, many things uh, can happen. I don't know. The seeking can increase. The seeking can become less. There can be clarity. A lot of, a lot of concepts can drop and so on. This may all happen apparently, but still the me is just the me before and afterwards, just telling itself another story. Oh, I'm much clearer now after I had after I had this glimpse. So I'm closer to wholeness now already. So it's a it's just the same story then uh, not the same story. It's just the same impression. I am someone, I'm separate, I'm on a path. This moment isn't it. But so that's the same than before. And it's the same until the last in breath. Well, I'm me and I'm on a path and the future will be whatever, depending on how life was, heaven or hell. But yeah, the last in breath is, yes. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. They say in the chat, uh, this week I read your book, You Will Never Be Free. Give me some great insights. So here I am, plus insights. Yes, even, even more, numerous insights after reading my book. I understand that's, that's normal. <laughs> there just isn't anyone. <laughs> there just isn't anyone having those insights. <laughs> <clears throat> There is no uh, there is no coming out of a situation because there is no situation. Yes, there is never one thing coming out of the other thing. There is no no real happening. Of course, it was a story. Yes. So insights don't come out of reading a book. Reading a book and having insights is undivided, and it's timeless and space and in experience. Yeah, there is no real cause and effect and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, which topics will be on the exam? <laughs> well, uh, Dario, I, uh, uh, sorry, I shouldn't. Well, I only prepared for you. It's only you, you will have to have the exam. And, <laughs> and it'll basically be about the me. <laughs> So what is, the question would be, what is the me looking for? 
You're right. Enlightenment. I say wrong. There is no me. <laughs> mean teacher. <laughs> well, there's just no one who will pass it. There's no one who will pass the exam. That's a bit. I know. Seen from the person that's mean, maybe. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Or oh, good day to you. Um, so what's interesting to me is how is that, because there is no me already, right? So there is no seeking. Yes. So say the sense of the me is something that's overlaid and uh, that this sense absolutely doesn't do anything. It doesn't influence anything. It can't even lift a finger, right? Yes. So how come the, the seeking activities are done by the body? There is no me. Oh, the how thing does that mean? How does that reconcile? Well, the thing is that it's just not separate. It's just not divided. So what apparently happens is, you know, it's even how I say it, you can't do it because it again sounds like a divided reality. But bodies assuming themselves to be someone um, doing seeking activities, so to speak, is undivided what happens. There's just no separation between the me illusion and the body, so to speak. You can't make this separation either. It's just what seems to be happening. And also the seeking isn't really seeking. It already is wholeness appearing to be seeking or apparently seeking, but it's never really, really seeking for something. So when you say this me illusion influences the body, it does influence the body because it goes on seeing gurus and teachers and thinks about its story. It's already a divided picture, a division that's not there actually, but that's just what seems to be happening. All of it. Yeah, I think that's the fine line that's impossible to really get. Exactly. Because, the, because one could also say, well, apparently seeking has a big influence on the body or the illusion to be someone. I guess you can't get it because already the questioner comes from separation. I have so it has to divide it up. Yeah, it already, that's what I mean. It already comes from a divided perspective. So it what can't, exactly, it can't, it can't understand that seeking is what is not really seeking, it's just what appears to be happening. Exactly. And so even sitting down to meditate or going fishing is really the same thing. But at the same time, you know, me will understand that and justify its own actions and say, well, anything that I do is it anyway, which is true. But it's not what you're being point not what you're pointing to at all. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a, a awful lot of people there, you know, that listen to this communication and say, "Well, every, there's no me already, so everything is fine." You know, I can do. So I can, I can go on meditating. Go on seeking. Yeah. I can go on seek uh, healing my childhood and can I can just huh, finally I, even and Andrea so Tony says that I'm allowed to be me and uh, well yes yes and no yes uh, but it's not the message it would already be an artificial understanding from this message drawing a conclusion yeah. and again it's not wrong it is what happens and no one's doing it but it's not exactly what's being said here yeah. Well, even that, it is and it isn't. <laughs> but it's not the suggestion saying there is no one. And the conclusion is, oh, then I can go on seeking. 
all yeah. right, there just isn't anyone. Yeah, yeah, I understood, but I will go on healing my past. Yes, but but there isn't. Yeah, 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 Andreas. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But on the other hand, there is no one doing that either. Yes, exactly. So it can't be stopped. Yeah, it doesn't need to be stopped. Because it's exactly that seeking, which is what apparently happens for no one. And it's whole and complete already. And that's well, why yeah, at the same time. Yeah. Well, yeah, at the same time, if, if the seeking would stop, those activities would probably stop would also stop exactly which would also be completely undivided and not really a cause and effect thing which you can fizzle in parts and then say well there's this and then this doesn't happen and well now i see the whole picture no it would just be what apparently happens mm. yeah. it's impossible yes it's impossible yeah All right. <clears throat> yes, that's a good good end. It's impossible. <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> it's just impossible. Sitting in front of the screen is an impossibility. It can't be. But the good news is, is it also isn't. It's not something that took form. It's not something that is that needs to be answered or understood or conceptualized or intellectualized. It just is as it is, apparently. That's just what apparently happens, which no one knows, which is inexperienced, yet it's full on and total. There's just, depending on what your life looked like, there's just eating cakes, walking around, lying on couches, visiting party, well, whatever. There's just what apparently <laughs> Uh, that was a dream actually yeah, up here okay so it's wholeness thank you very much for joining i wish you a lovely day thank you bye thank you very much. thanks andreas thanks nice andreas you. thank you, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you thank you bye thank bye you. <laughs>